and welcome to Time Team again. Nice to see you. And you too. Um, as you know, uh, we're very interested in the potential next year to look at some interesting buildings, which I sort of always associate with you. Uh, Tudor mansions, Elizabethan houses, that sort of structural thing. And I know you and I in the past have talked about a site called Leia Marnie. Yeah. And I wondered if you could give me an idea about why you think it might work for Time Team and what, what you'd like to do if we actually went there. Yeah, so um, it's it's a family affair, is, is Leia Marnie. Henry and John Marnie, they are of the court circle of young-ish Henry VIII. We're talking the years around 1520. And um, this is all about the experience of two big things. One is Wolsey's creation of Hampton Court. And that was my old stamping ground. I did my PhD on you know, Wol the creation of Wolsey's Hampton Court, which was innovative for many reasons, it involved Italian terracotta work I and mean, the, the way that a cardinal appealed to a European audience on the banks of the Thames brought in all kinds of exotica that then permeated out into the court circle. And Leia Marnie is one of the big examples of this. It has a socking great gatehouse laden with terracotta of shell shapes and dolphins, all these Roman kind of Renaissance designs. The thing about it is, that's all you've got. It's, it's, it's the gatehouse range and the gatehouse into something which was never built. Now, this major family setting out a house which, typical for England at the time really, which looked east across the North Sea and the trading links beyond. It's so poetic, so evocative, but there's a practical element to it too. They, they really ought to have dug the footings for the rest of the house, even if they didn't get round to building it above ground. There could be a lot below ground, which tells us on what pattern they were intending to build. And it's that, it's that moment of ambition which was lost, you know, because of, you know, family tragedies and money and the rest of it, all those things which suddenly curtail the, the fortunes of noble families. There's, there's a big story in there as to what Tudor England might have been. And I really want to know about those lost ambitions. And I think Leomani is a great house. To so um, so I, 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 I get the sense that we're going to spend three days looking for lost ambitions. Yeah. Um, I want to get geophysics in there, obviously. I'm a little worried about the sentence. I had a vision in my head that this was uh, somewhere that Henry had, had, had sort of taken to bits. And we did um, Elizabeth's Palace at Richmond, mm. um, where they did such a clean job that there were empty trenches with a few pipe stems in it. Mm. Um, and but eventually we found some rather nice building remains. Are you saying literally that there may be nothing in the ground apart from some footings? And what yep. you're asking us to do is find a plan for you. Yeah, that's that's what that's one end of the spectrum. Um, and that is that there should be the plan of an intended building. Now, what's odd about that is that the it's not the main part of the, what what's odd about it is, I think, wrapped up in a whole bunch of presumptions. We presume that what you see today is all they ever built. But it's a really weird thing to have done to build your entrance range without the main accommodation of the hall and the chambers and so on is a very strange thing to do. And I've got a sneaking suspicion that more was built than we know. So um, but, you know, it, it it's a really good way of testing that. I, but I think you've got a guaranteed result either way. Either you look at what they <laughs> it's a consolation prize, what they wanted to build, which should still be manifest in the shape of the of, of the trenches and footings for foundations. Or we find remains of footings that show that they did actually build the rump of a structure which may not have been finished and which was then truncated into the gatehouse you see today. Just the most spectacular part happens to have survived. Well, I'm, it, I, 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 I'm, I'm a great believer, Jonathan, in your ability to use your, your eloquence to paint the, with your imagination what might have been there. My slight concern is we put the geophys in there and say, maybe you're wrong, maybe they just put the footings in. However, um, as you know, we have these, this area of time team we call the Aura Projects. Mm. And we're willing, when we're working with someone who we've worked with a lot like you, to do a bit of initial work on a site, just to test it out, to see whether your suspicions that it might be bigger 
than it is, or there's more there than it is. I mean, what happened to these people? Having built the gatehouse and the walls, did they then fall out of favour, run out of money and built something somewhere else? Well, what they managed to achieve were uh, two very beautiful tombs in the immediately adjacent parish church. But then that's the end of the line. They're not a family that found, um, um, that, that, that were continued really into the in age of Elizabeth I. They're really Henrician courtiers and then, um, um, then run, run, run their end, you know. It's, um... Well, I definitely think we should look at perhaps doing a, an initial, maybe GPR, maybe MAG. How big is the area inside this wall? Well, that I don't know, you see, and this is why it's so much fun, because a lot of great Tudor houses were two courtyards, and um, this may have been one, may have been two, but um, the, it, it, this brief, brilliant moment around 1520, Field of Cloth of Gold era, they may have come back from France, having seen the enormous investment in you know, the temporary English palace there was 327 feet on each side of timber and canvas and you know painted effects of terracotta and the rest of it and you get the sense that they're 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 pulled up into this whirlwind of ambition overreached themselves so was it one courtyard or was it two were there ancillary buildings did as in many places, did they actually build some kitchens first, which were then abandoned? You know, a lot of a lot of the great houses that we looked at in Time Team, the accounts of them begin with the garden because you want to have the thing well established before you begin. To have the most spectacular part surviving to full height, seven stories, suggests to me there was much more building work going on. And it's all been raised and reused somewhere else. But, but um, it, it's a question that bugs me and, and needs to be answered, really. Now, while I've got you here, um, you and I have discussed this before, that, that uh, any visitor um, um, to Hampton Court um, would always be, have their eye caught by the amazing painting of the field of cloth of gold. Mm. And we've had talked with Susie about this before. And, and it's one of those sort of things I always feel you know, the logic of this would be to take a huge geophysics team out there mm. and geophys that whole area if the French were willing to have us and we mm. could establish a good good relationship there um, and just see if there are any traces of that event to, be, to, to actually be found. And as mm. far as I know, I don't think it's been done yet, has it? Has, has anybody gone out there and Stuart no, I, 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 I don't think it has been done. And I think this probably for the reason that they I, I've been there and um, I remember doing a sketch for BBC uh, series and it was in February and I could hardly do a piece to camera because my bottom lip was frozen and it was um, it was a ploughed ploughed fields. It's a heavily agricultural area. And these were very temporary buildings. So on the French side, it's tent pegs are all you're going to find traces of if nothing had changed since. On the English side, it's a massive building, but it's a timber framed uh, thing, which was then dismantled. So I don't think there's going to be a lot to find. There may well be objects. I mean, God, the wealthiest people of two countries were gathered there for wrestling and watching fireworks. I mean, all kinds of stuff. And so the finds there are probably um, phenomenal. You know, if you're going to find a coin, it's going to be a good one. Um, there, might, there, there might be somewhere on the um, dining room shelf of a French farmer also, I suppose. If they yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Now, yeah. you and I have talked before a little bit about bringing geophysics to a site and bringing all that new technology. As you know, we're developing this way of seeing buildings where you can have a perfect 3D one two millimeter accurate photogrammetry image which could be moved around and you can see all the details of it now yeah. I, I always like to ask you a, a unexpected question given the number of wonderful buildings you've been involved in mm. is there a building that you would personally like to take that 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 photogrammetry technology to um, so that you could actually go into the finest details of it. Is there a castle or a stately home or something that you think that some of the solutions to the structural questions might be resolved by that big exterior and interior scan? 
Wow, what a very good question. I mean, the, the largest and most complex buildings, uh, you know, that have those multi-phase issues uh, tend to be cathedrals. And uh, having climbed up the inside of them, you do spot details that you never would otherwise, you know. Um, one of the other great things about cathedrals, other than looking at some of the phases, one building is, is which is, is Litchfield Cathedral. At the west end of the nave, there's a whole bunch of bodge jobs in the mouldings that make me ask whether the uh, 12th century towers still survive in the core of the later western towers. And um, photogrammetry actually could really help with that to understand whether they've simply been clad by later masonry and disguised heavily. I suspect they have. But another thing about cathedrals is that they conceal a lot of detail that you can't see from the ground um, in bosses, sculptures of bosses. And to get um, it very detailed photogrammetry of a sculptural program high up something like the Angel Choir in Lincoln to be mapped, you know, with a drone would be really superb because formerly they've really been witnessed by the eye of God. You know, they're made on the ground and then put up there and you, you, you can't see them, but there are often very meaningful um, meanings. Well, me meaningful meanings. There's um, a, a sculptural program which has been very well thought out and very rich piece of storytelling. So that 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 kind of thing, I think, would be super interesting. Uh, one other example of that is the nave ceiling of Peterborough Cathedral, the largest painted medieval ceiling in Europe. And why isn't that better known? You know, 40 minutes out of London, everyone should be going for a, uh, a weekend to Peterborough um, just to see that. Well, if you can get a drone up there and record that ceiling, um, I've worked out what that means, but it's a great way to tell the story. And final question, we, we've been working, as, as, uh, as you know, at Broughton, and Broughton brings to mind some of those possessions that were in the hands of the French and the English um, during the time of Henry II, uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine, and things like that. And um, I was interested to look at, at some of the evidence for the early Fines Castle, for instance, Mm. Um, and it seems to me there must be in France, around the Aquitaine and various other places, some castles which are just redolent of that wonderful period of history. Mm. And I wondered if you'd, you'd ventured further abroad ever, or are there any castle sites which are deserted, destroyed, lost, that you think, oh, well, I'd be interested to look what's going under the floor of that sometime. <laughs> I tell you what, what my um, where my imagination lies in France and its castles, and that is Henry the Seventh in exile. You know when he when he was uh, as a lad uh, put for safekeeping um, in the uh, in the castles of northern France. I'd I'd like to uh, visit those and see what's left of them, and um, I, I haven't done that yet, and so I'd I'd love to do it. And how, how, how good are your relationships with the French, uh, Jonathan? Have you got some contacts over there and sort of people we could have a chat to and um, discuss this sort of project? Oh, I remember blagging a visit into Versailles once, into the hidden rooms there, but uh, that was a while ago. You know, when it, more of a management career gives you a, a key, <laughs> key to those kinds of places. Um, I, 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 not, not, off, not offhand, I have to say. OK, well, I'm, I'm uh, going to leave you with a few thoughts about northern France, which would be yeah. rather lovely. And I love the idea of Henry II. And final question, does your heart always go back to, um, you know, your, your, your original building um, that you worked in? It, those early buildings when you were looking after the royal palaces, was there yeah. one that particularly caught your heart and you can go back there still? And was it Hampton Court or one of the others that, that, that brought the thing alive for you? Um, Hampton Court has got such a wealth of history to it. It's fantastic. It's always going to come, you know, provide you with narratives and um uh, there's just enough left of each part for, to give clues as to what it was like, which is tantalizing. It's a very English thing to do is to only partially demolish stuff. You know, it's the English compromise that leaves you with quite a lot left. Um, but uh, my favorite building in the entire world is Lincoln Cathedral. It's all quite Anglo-centric, isn't it? Um, but I would say if I was stuck somewhere for a weekend, it'd probably be Bologna. Oh, yeah. 
You know, there's uh, if we were to go abroad, Tim, you know, the, 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 the ridiculous defensible tower dwellings of Bologna stretching 100 metres uh, off the street uh, because some family was prepared to climb that high to defend their small patch of land. I find um, those northern Italian towns utterly thrilling. Wonderful. Jonathan, thank you very much. Very nice to hear from you. Thank and you, we'll possibly set ourselves up with a, um, uh, um, a, a, an Aura project scan of Leomani, if the, if the family there would like to have us. Great. And uh, All um, right. we'll give some attention to Henry VII in exile. Super. 100 meter towers, Lincoln Cathedral, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and even Peterborough, don't forget, you yeah. know, don't forget a weekend in Peterborough, everybody. Jump Week. on the train, you won't, you won't forget it. All right, thanks so much, Tim. Thanks, Peter Jonathan. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. To ensure you catch all the latest updates, please do subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, sign up to our newsletter and join us on Patreon.